Radzavani for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. Delighted to finally have back on Zoom the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Sam Jones himself. Sam, you look like you've changed a bit. Your beard style's changed since we last spoke. Yeah, yeah. I grow it in and out, mate. I grow it in and out. It's, uh, it's, I think it's here to stay. I think it's a winner. And I'm sick of people saying I use Just For Men as well, you know. I don't ever use it. I've never used it in my life. I'm so open about it shit that I've, I've ever had never never used hair dye in my life as you can see there's a few fucking greys in there but i think i'm going to leave it there for effect um firstly how how's the family how's the little one yeah good mate he's good mate he's growing very very fast how's your little one mate all good everyone's well everyone's well enjoying the weather not particularly mate i, I need you, you need a swimming pool for like I mean, it's meant to be 40 degrees next week i don't want to be one of those people that like moans about all weather but 40 degrees is, is, is by far too hot it's no thank you but it is what it is it's only for a couple of days everyone will be fine drink some water stay indoors and you everyone will be fine no absolutely uh sam a lot of hot topics going around in boxing uh, at the moment so i thought i obviously ping you a message to to get your thoughts on some of them let's start off with with yourself firstly what is what is the latest with problem when can we expect i know there's a couple of shows coming up but what can we anticipate in these shows over the coming weeks yeah, um, Pat McCormack um, having his second professional fight um, on Channel 5. Um, massive audience on Channel 5. Lisa White's I've been out three years. She's going to be on that show. And there are going to be shows and uh, a lot of news to be announced in due course with Pro Bellum. So it's going to be so like some, some exciting stuff coming up. Are you, are you enjoying, enjoying what you're doing now compared to kind of S-Jam? Uh, when you're doing S-Jam, you're almost winding everybody up with your antics and the way you was as a person, but are you enjoying this side of, of boxing? Well, yeah, it, listen, it's been a slow period. It has been a slow period. And like me, I'm like, I'm, I'm grateful in, in some ways because um, I've been able to spend some time with my, my son, who's only, who's only this and he's only just turned one. So I'm grateful in that, in that sense. But me, I like to be out there, I like to be doing stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm a, and people can say what they like. I'm a boxing man. I, I, I love it. I absolutely love the sport. It's been really good to me. It's been, it's, and I, I just have, I have so much passion. I've got a lot to give. I'm only 33 years old. I've got a lot to give, and um, there's still plenty more. Unfortunately, I'm going to be annoying people for many more years to come. I know and, the last. Uh, Matt, but as as for but as the good for your question, mm. of course, mate, I miss I miss the um I, I speak to the boys still. Like I mean, I know it's hard for people to kind of grasp sometimes. So I think that things like that usually end on sour notes. They don't. Adam Morrill is my best friend. He, he he is, and um the boys I still talk to on a on a regular basis because they're they're just they're, they're my they're my guys. Like Johnny Fisher, like. I signed him. Do you know what I mean? I signed most of the guys in that in that in that stable. So I can't just switch off my my feelings. Do you know what I mean? I wish that and, and and as I say, like I'm 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 there for them no matter what. But I, I do miss it, yeah, because I, I I'm I'm fighter first and I've always been that way. I know you've you had kind of a, a growing stable with S Jam, but just on a couple of the fighters, I know you're close to most majority of them. You're you're a man who look after your fighters and make sure your fighters come first. But uh, recently announced, Florian Marku finally gets his opportunity to take a, a fight back home in his in his beloved nation of, of Albania. Yeah, yeah, I'm very happy for Florian. He's been wanting that for so long. I mean, I had a I had a good relationship with with. Uh, I mean, listen, me and Adam have done a great. We we did a great job for Florian. He was out. He was active. He was fighting on different platforms at one time. One one time he was fighting on BT. Then he was over on with Eddie on Sky. But I had a great relation. Well, I have a great relationship with Two Five Eight. So shout out Two Five Eight because they got him on both of the Anthony uh, of, of Anthony Joshua's last two cards. So. Florian's profile was rising in this country. He was already a star in Albania, but it was always about making him a star over here as well. And I think that I've played, I've personally played a big part in that. I mean, me and Adam have been great. We work well, very well together, but I personally played a big part in that. And it's, and it's very, very, I can sit back and be very happy watching Florian fill a stadium in, in his homeland because he, he deserves a homecoming. Joe Joyce, a couple of weeks ago, I know he was out after that hand injury against Chris and Hammer. Yeah. But... Would it please you now to finally see him get one of those big boys now? Uh, I know he's ranked. He needs one. He, listen, go. listen, mate. He, he needs one. He needs one now. Um, it's not a secret how much work I put into to put into Joe Joyce. I mean, as I say, that like, he's still one of my one of my closest friends in this world, and like, I I want to see him do well. I mean, Hammer people, as I say, like, oh Warren. Listen, Frank Warren's 
I, I know you look at the bar and yes, it can be a bit frustrating. You look at the bar fighting Trevor Brown for the vacant, but like I personally don't really consider. It's another subject, but like I consider how you won the belt and who you won it off the, the, to, to legitimise that title. I don't consider Trevor Bryan a, a world champion. Johnny Fisher would beat Trevor Bryan, no problem. Uh, any any one of the uh, the S Jam guys would would beat Trevor Bryan early as well. Um, so I don't consider him like a world champion. But yeah, you can. See, some people say, "Oh, Dubois gets treated better than than Joe." But listen, they they had a deal with Joe Parker. I know this for a fact. They had a deal with with Joe Parker ready to fight, and Joe Parker backed out of the fight. I mean, anybody knows in boxing, if you want to make a fight easy like, and, and you're a free agent, just do it on, on the channel that Joe's contracted to fight on and, and the fight's done. And he's gone and signed with a rival promoter. And listen, fair enough. But to do that right when you've agreed a fight, it shows you don't want the fight. Years and years ago, I love Joe Parker, by the way, but this is just a fact. But years ago, when Joe was training at David A's gym, Joe Parker was preparing for Anthony Joshua there. And he was there ages before the fight and we offered him free sparring do you know what I mean free sparring from um is hard to get never mind paid sparring but free sparring is is is, is priceless he didn't want to spar Joe so I always know he never want to fight Joe never he never wants to fight Joe and I don't believe he ever will fight Joe unless it's for a world heavyweight title I just don't think he wants any of that Joe Joyce smoke you feel like August 20th is an important date because I know obviously Joshua Usyk get it on and we'll come on to that a little bit later but we find out what's going to happen with the WBO, with the WBA, who goes yeah. first, you know, does, does Fury come back? Do, does, do they get an exception? Is that the, the main important date before Joe can kind of announce his next? Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, I don't want to just say this, but like, it's like Tyson will say one thing and then the next day he'll say another. I genuinely don't believe he's going to retire. I mean, Tyson wants to be regarded, which he's more than capable of, by the way, as, as the greatest of his, his era. And I believe what he's achieved so far, he's already got a shout of that, but, he needs to beat AJ, he needs to fight AJ, he needs to fight Joe Joyce, he needs to fight these the the up and coming these up and coming heavy, heavyweights. Obviously, you don't go on forever, but definitely the, the, the heavyweights in his era, he needs to um he needs to, to fight, in my opinion. But look, listen, if he wants to retire, fair play to him. He's got hundreds of millions in the bank. He doesn't really need to, but I'm talking about if he wants to cement his legacy as the best of this era. That's what I believe he has to do. So I think Tyson, we will see Tyson Fury in a ring again. Um, and if he doesn't want to box again, you need to vacate the belt and let the other boys fight for it. A man who doesn't want to retire, Derek Chisora, we saw him uh, last week uh, getting that close decision win over uh, Kubrat Pulev. Um, what do you make of Chisora's performance first, Sam? Do you know what? I've developed a real, like, <laughs> a real, a, 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 like a, a, an affection towards Derek over the last year or so. Um, he's 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 like one of a kind, isn't he, Derek? I really wanted him to fight Joe um, like years and years ago, but like I'm, I, I always say, I, I believe Joe would be. He's all wrong for kind of Derek's style, but Derek really is one of these people where he, if the money's right, he'll fight you. He's not turning down somebody. If the money's right, Derek will fight somebody, and like he's like uh, one of a dying breed. Because when he says, "Oh, he'll fight this guy, this guy," oh, I'll fight Wilder. He means it. You can see it in his face. He means it. Like he's a, he's one of a kind, Derek. And when he goes, the sport will miss him. He's a yes. I know he's not won a world title, and yet he's known as this gatekeeper. But he's a legend of British boxing. Is Derek? He is. And um, I was very very pleased for him that he got the decision. I know people had it. Some a lot of people had it to Pulev. Some people had it to Derek. But it's about time Derek Derek got Derek got a, a bit of luck in my opinion. He got dicked. When he boxed at Hellenius all them years ago, and um, he's, I mean, he had a very close fight with Joe Parker in the first one. Um, I know he thought he got robbed against Usyk, but I, I didn't see it like that. I thought Usyk won, Usyk won um, clear, but he's Derek deserved that. It's the biggest win of his career. Do you know what I mean? It's the biggest win of his career, and I, I was very, very happy for him. I do not want him to fight Deontay Wilder though. I was going to come on to that. Obviously, Eddie's mentioned it no, previously no, no. after the fight as well. Is that just? No, nah, no, no, not for not for me, mate. Like, like if someone should should lie in front of the negotiator and just just ban that all all together. I mean, no, mate. Derek don't need that kind of heat at thirty eight years old. He doesn't need that kind of fight, in my opinion. No, not 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 for me. I think if if you care about Derek Chisora and and his health and his well being, 
you do not put him in with arguably the biggest puncher of all time. No. Okay, um, Sam, a lot of uh, talk this week at a potential fight between a certain Chris Eubank Jr. and and Conor Ben. I know it's not officially confirmed. You know, I've heard Gareth Davis go on to say he is signed. Conor's come out and said, you know, nothing's been finalised just yet. Um, Is it a sensible fight? See, right, I... I said this fight was done a while ago, before Gareth A. Davis said this. I, I said this, but like I've heard it's been almost a done deal for a while now. I don't know. I, 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 I'm hearing there's an announcement next week. Um, listen, it's a huge fight. It is a huge fight. It makes both men millions of pounds, yeah? It carries on the legacy their old man left. It's got everything. And... Like I say, if you don't want to watch it or you, you, you think, oh, it's just for the money, like, which, uh, listen, if it is, then fair play to them. Boxing is a short career. Earn while you can. Do you know what I mean? Like, like it's a great fight. It's a great, it'll be a great spectacle. And believe me, those tickets will sell out in seconds. Because I've said, I'll be asking Eddie and Frank, uh, Frank Smith for a freebie and hopefully they'll give me one. But if not, I'll buy a ticket because I want to see this. I really want to see this. I've heard Connor's, doing really well in sparring against bigger men and he's he's he, you only have to see Connor's improving. I've been a big like not 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 like negative towards Connor then, but like you can't complain that of, of him now. Do you know what I mean? Like he's gone, he's going up and he's fighting Chris Eubank. I mean, it's just a great fight, mate. It's a great fight. Chris Senior shirt, no sleeves on his shirt. Uh, Nigel Ben coming in from Australia. You can have Roy Jones Jr. at the press conference table. Mate, this fight's got fucking everything. I can't wait to watch it. Proper gas to, to, to see it all. I want to see the build up. I want it to be like the old HBO 24 7, the build up. I can't wait to I can't wait to watch it, mate. As a fan, I cannot wait to watch it. If you don't want to watch it, don't want to pay for it or whatever, just don't watch it then. So some of the criticism coming towards both Junior and Ben is Junior's talked about becoming a world champion. I know he won that IBO belt, but not many regard that as a legitimate world title, but he should be focusing on the elites of, of the middleweight division or, or super middleweight division. While Conor Ben, he, and I'll, I'll come to Joe Gallagher's comments in, in a moment, but he hasn't even gone 12 rounds in his professional career yet, and it could be a very, very dangerous fight. I think he went 12 rounds once against Formella, didn't he? Correct. Was that once, or it might have been a 10 round, I don't know, but he'd done that 10. fight at a ferocious pace as well, if you watch that fight back. Yeah. Paul Miller's not an elite fighter. He's not really a world class fighter, but he's he's a good fighter. Do you know what I mean? He's not a bad fighter, and he's, and he's still. Um, are we what we're we talking about? Joe Gallagher's comments. Yeah, a bit of both. Um, first of all, congratulations to Joe Gallagher yesterday. Great win with Mark Efron. I was very very pleased for Mark Efron. I didn't think Lennox Clark performed very well, but Mark Efron performed out of his skin, and he deserved it. Do you know what I mean? Three times. That was his third attempt at a, a British title. So. Fair play to, to him. And listen, Joe Gallagher is one of the country's greatest ever trainers. People like it or not. Um, even whatever's opinion, people's opinions on him is, he's one of the greatest trainers ever. Look, he's a serial winner, isn't he, Joe Gallagher? Serial winner. Um, but moving to his comments, I thought he was very unfair on, 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 on his comments there because, I mean, people jumping up weights. So Natasha Jonas, I know, I know it's a... It's, it was world title stuff, but she jumped up like two weights. Like, do you know what I mean? That was her first fight of that weight. It's like, it happens. Do you know what I mean? It happens. I mean, Conor Ben has, has, is managed by Tony Sims. Tony Sims is, do you know what I mean? Cares about all of his fighters. Do you know what I mean? They're all like family to him. He's not going to put Conor Ben in a fight if he thought, oh, he could get seriously hurt. He would fan, he will fancy Conor Ben against Chris Eubank. Me personally, I think Chris Jr. is the favourite in the fight because... If Chris Jr. had shown signs that he's a bit chinny, I would think, wow, Connor's got a great chance because Connor can really wallop. But Chris Eubank Jr. has shown he can be outboxed, but he's he's never shown once that he's wilted like with a shot or like like he's that's why I think the fight's so difficult for Connor. But saying that on the other on the other scale, the weight I'm hearing is 156 or 158. That's gonna favor Connor, in my opinion. Because Chris Eubank Jr. has never made that weight, so it's 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 a it's a massive fight. But yeah, but going to Gallagher's comments, I think he compared it, it to like, oh, we're moaning about YouTube boxing, mate. Come on, you can't you can't compare Chris Eubank Jr. and Conor Ben 
to fucking Jake Paul and what's his name? Gibb, whoever he boxed on his debut or like Logan Paul and KSI. You cannot compare. These are legitimate fighters, you know what I mean? With fight blood running through their veins, you know what I mean? Of who they're, who they're from and like they're, they're both fighters at the end of the day and, and they're going to make millions of pounds. We can't begrudge them for that. And it's going to be a great spectacle. I really, I know I can't, I'm quite across excited, but I can't, I genuinely can't wait for that, for that fight. Can't, cannot wait for it to all be announced, the press conference, everything. Really looking forward to it. I think it's good for the sport. You know, but Eddie, yeah, so going, going to Gallagher's comments, I do think he was very, very harsh. You know, Eddie's been trying to land a big fight for Conor and he struggled because most of those big fighters are with PBC. And we know yeah, yeah. Eddie's relationship with PBC. We saw it recently when, when he tried to make Chizora Kolnaki, that, that fell apart straight away. Um, did, was this Eddie's kind of only choice for Connor to give him, land him a big fight? Do you know what it is, right? This is my personal opinion, being like people say, like, I, I will just say it how it is. If Connor Box say someone like Jaron Ennis, yeah, Ennis, in my opinion, is a big favorite in that fight, yeah, he's going to be, me, my opinion, Jaron Ennis is going to be the best 147 pound fighter in the world in the next 18 months. He'll be number one in the division. Yeah. Once the Crawford Spence thing is out the way, I think Errol will go move up. Maybe Terence will move up. But I think Boots is the future of the division. If Connor boxed him, yeah, and lost, lost quite badly, where do you, you can't really re. You, well, of course, that's a silly thing. You can you can rebuild him, but he'll have to go on maybe fight at a domestic level, fight uh, at the. At the um, some of the domestic, the Congos, the, the, the McKinsons, that like you'll have to fight those. And I don't think that's really what Connor wants to do. It's never what he wants. Kind of, he skipped it. He's, he's skipped this kind of level he wants to, because he's got his, he's got this high ranking. So what do you do with him? Now, Chris Eubank Jr., all the history there, they needed a mega fight. This is that mega fight. If Connor loses, he's too big. I mean, there's a ready-made excuse there. He won't lose his ranking with with the with the with the governing bodies. He can go straight back down into welterweight, crack on into a straight into another super fight. Do you understand what I mean? There's no there's no real loss here for Conor unless he gets spanked in one round, which I very much doubt. But I I believe Eubank will still be too big, even though the weight's there and the fact he's got a. a a good chin and Connor, there's still question marks over him. Do you know what I mean? The last time he was in with a someone that can punch a little bit was Cedric Payno. Do you know what I mean? So, and he's been very carefully match made. I mean, that's just that's just the facts in my opinion. But I've always said this: Connor Ben has all the. You can see he's got all the tools to potentially be a superstar in in in, in boxing. He can punch. He can talk talk a good game. He's got everything. So. I just think that's why they're taking this fight because it's like, although it's risky in the sense of fighting the bigger man, it's non-risky in the sense of it won't damage him commercially if he loses to Chris Eubank. It'll only enhance him. It's like, oh, he's big balls. He's moved up in weight, but he was just too big. Move back down to world to weight and, you, and, and there's your division there. He's got his mega fight there with Chris Eubank. I think it's very sensible business from um, Matchroom. I think it's very sensible for both guys. I mean, the person that's got the most losing this is Chris Jr. Because if he loses to Connor, who's a welterweight, where does he really go? He probably has to retire, 33 years of age. But listen, there's millions on the table. And we know Chris Eubank Jr., like most, most prize fighters, they, 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 they like a pound note. So we can't begrudge them um, in this fight. That's my honest opinion and my, my view on, on that fight. And, uh, but if you're, if you're a boxing person, you cannot wait for this fight to start. The press conference alone is fucking box office, mate. I can't wait to watch it. But yeah, that's my opinion of, uh, of that. Whether people agree or not is up to them, but that's my opinion. Sam, is it though disappointing that we haven't seen Connor with the likes of McKinson, the Congos, yeah. Josh Kelly's before was his defeat. Florian Marku. I wanted to make the Marku fight. I thought that would have been a great fight. I mean, look, this this was my that was my issue with Connor. I've never I've, I like I promise you I like him. Like I've sent him I've sent him a message of the day. Like I, I I really like the kid. But sometimes I think that he's he's I don't know. Like he didn't want to fight Echo Essman because Echo Essman was beneath. And I kind of get it. It's not it's not mega money for him. Florian Marku. Oh, he's above Florian Marku. But that fight would have sold out the O2 Arena. I don't want to fight. Um, Josh Kelly, because he lost to Avanessian, but doesn't want to fight Avanessian. I just kind of thought, Neh. but you could, no one could really say shit to him now because he's fighting Chris Eubank. He's going up there and he's fighting Chris Eubank, but I still think very smart business move. But yes, mate, in an answer to your question, I do think it's disappointing that he's never 
competed for a British title. I know he did want to at one stage against Jenkins and there was like a, it was because of the promotional situation. So he did kind of want to box for it, but he still had opportunities to box over other other kids in the, in the division. But what people need to realise is boxing is a business. And when you've got smart people around you that are telling you, look, Connor, maybe we need to do this because it's going to be better for you commercially and ultimately it's going to be more um, lucrative for you. They've made the right decision because, I mean, look what, look what they've, they've done a great job with, with Connor Ben. No one can deny that they've done a great job with him. But it comes a point, in, especially with the British fans, they will only accept it for so long, the gimmick kind of fights, like the Algiers, that who's 39, and that Van Heerden. Uh, they'll only accept it for so long. They needed a mega fight. And although I know names like Maurice Hooker was, was, um, was being mentioned for him, Maurice Hooker is a, is a top-level fighter, world-class fighter, but he's a 140-pounder, 140 and ultimately he's not got a very big profile. Avanessian has a bigger profile than him. So if you fight him, it's like, well, why didn't you fight... It, it, they needed something massive and the 147 pounders are with PBC. This is a huge fight. This is a huge fight. I know I'm going around the house a little bit, but it's a massive fight. And anyone that kind of tells you otherwise doesn't have a clue what they're talking about. Sam, let's move on. We're approaching just under six weeks away from one of the most important heavyweight fights uh, in, in recent times, anti Joshua attempts to reclaim the belt and become a three-time heavyweight champion. I don't want to really want to focus too much on the fight because we can do something a bit closer to the time. But uh, he announced, Eddie announced, DAZN announced that this lucrative deal that DAZN had captured anti Joshua for a, a long period of time. They gave him ambassador roles or, or some yeah, sort of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Killian well. Mbappe deal. Yeah, basically the Mbappe deal. Um, but rumours are that his fight with Usyk is not going to land on DAZN and it's going to land yeah. on Sky Sports. Do you make up all of that? Um, from my understanding, from very early doors, is that it was never Eddie's decision or anyone's decision where that fight was landed on. It was always going to be the, the Saudis' this decision because they bought the rights to the fight. So it is what it is. I mean, listen, AJ, even if he loses this fight, is still a Anthony Joshua and he's still the biggest well, definitely top top two biggest stars in, in, in British boxing. Maybe he say he's top five in boxing in general, in world boxing. He's a commercial phenomenon. So I still think there's massive fights from a Dillian White. Which, but we're talking about that he's a beaten man. I still think he can beat Usyk. Do you know what I mean? With the right tactics, um, a good a bit a good big man will always be a good little man. And but even though Usyk's a phenomenal little man, I do think Robert Garcia is a phenomenal trainer. I think he's the right type of trainer with the kind of the aggressive mentality. Um that can that can um with the right with, as I say with the right tactics I believe AJ can do it but ultimately you probably got to make Usyk a favorite due to the fact of what happened in the first fight he won so convincingly but I do think that was a lot even though Usyk was brilliant I do think that was a lot down to the fact the tactics from Joshua were pretty poor um but yeah mate great fight really looking forward to it and I really want Anthony Joshua to win but Sam, didn't you find it strange that DeZone announced a deal that didn't yeah. include the most important fight for Anthony Joshua? Um, I think maybe the timing of the deal. Do you know what I mean? Maybe the timing of the deal. Maybe that was probably unnecessary to announce until maybe after the fight, win, lose or draw. So maybe, maybe then, because it kind of... But it's like, even though Sky... Listen, it's good for Sky because they want the right... Listen, they want put, they put it on box office and stuff. It's good for Sky, but like, why would you want to be so desperate to buy like a fight that you've got real no involvement with with AJ after the fight? Like, do, do you know what I mean? But that's just, that's just my opinion. They boxing's a, boxing's a mad place at the moment, mate. So I don't I don't really know. But ultimately, Sky have got a huge fight on their hands. And listen, it's 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 a competitive market nowadays. And Sky have felt that that's the that's the 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 route they want to go down. They want to secure the rights. I know. And 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 it looks as though I mean, I mean I'm not I'm not aware of whoever it goes on I mean because I'd watch it on any fucking platform it doesn't matter whether Anthony Joshua could box on fucking Babe Station and people would still tune in to watch it do you know what I mean it doesn't matter with AJ in my opinion he's already a his profile's already massive it's not his profile can't really get any bigger in boxing so you can see why he's took the DAZN deal because they've offered him the most money and but it's back on Sky yeah boxing a mad game at the moment mate it really is and but. Ultimately, it's uh, 
it's pound notes that count and Sky's obviously bid the most. And so what if he, I mean, I don't, I don't know, mate. I don't know. I don't know if it's been confirmed yet, but strong reports suggest that it's going to be on Sky. So good luck to him. Sam, we've always said the more promoters, the more networks, the better for fighters. I just want to ask yeah. you, a lot of criticism recently. Obviously, we've got Wasserman trying to fight. We've got yourselves. We've got BT. We've got Dizel. We've got Sky. Um, a lot of promoters, a lot of channels, but a lot of criticism coming towards the shows itself. The cards are running thin. The, the arenas are half empty. Yesterday, I didn't. It didn't seem like a big crowd on TV. I think Chisora did about five and a half thousand uh, yeah. last week. So, what what do you think is down down to? Is it is it too many platforms now? Are we going to complain that there's too many platforms? I just, this is what I think. Yeah, there is a lot of platforms. Um, there's also, like, not so much elite talent, and there's lots of kind of choices, which is the reason why promoters have to pay up a lot more money, which is great for fighters, so I'm happy for the fighters on that front. But until promoters work together to make, in, to make great fights, you'll continue to get diluted shit cards in boxing. That's just the bottom line. You'll, you'll get some great ones, but you'll get a lot of shit ones because promoters, a lot of promoters, are reluctant to work together. And that's not going to help change boxing. Boxing needs people to work together to create good fights and make the best fights. And as I say, until you see that, you will continue to get diluted shit. Sam, is it is it promoters or is it networks? You know, would networks allow you? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's a lot to do with egos. It was a lot of egos in boxing. Yeah, you move your egos to the side and you do what's best for the fighter. You make great fights. Like what cr cross networks is like. Crawford was never able to fight Spence because he was with Top Rank and Sp and Spence was with the PBC. Do you know what I mean? Wilder and Joshua. He was with the PBC. We all wanted to see that fight, didn't we? Remember that time when Joshua come over here or oh, no we'll do it on here we just wanted to see the fight no one cares about the politics involved as a fan you just want to see the best fights and again you'll continue to I mean listen we, we some there's some shows last night was a great show Frank Paul it was a really good show but as I say that that good shows are kind of few and far between and you get more bad than good in my opinion nowadays and we want to see we've got unbelievable pool of talent but they're, they're they're fragmented into different promotional companies let's work together and let's make the best fights possible for the fans so i spoke to eddie hearn uh, about 10 days ago and i asked him was this the toughest period of his promotional career because recently obviously josh kelly left him um, Chris Billings is now fighting on Sky. Cody's putting out certain tweets. There are other fighters that have left as well. Um, is it? Do you feel like this is finally a testing time for Hearn, whereas before it was just Hearn and Warren going at it? Well, look, Eddie's probably not used to being having this happen to him. Do you know what I mean? Like Pete fan, fans doing that because he's always been, I wouldn't say number, out and out number one, but he, he's, he's probably viewed as he was the number one. Do you know what I mean? The number one. So he's probably not used to this happening, but I think because the market's so competitive and like what he said, if an Akoli who's probably not getting the same treatment as a Conor Ben or a Canelo Alvarez or like, because Eddie's promoting worldwide. Do you know what I mean? So like he's got Canelo Alvarez. He's got, he's got the, the, a worldwide stable. Do you, do, do you know what I mean? So if they've got a chance to go, listen, this happened with Savannah Marshall, hasn't it? Savannah Marshall was not getting the airtime she probably deserved on the zone. She's moved over to Sky Sports and she's a superstar now. So, so listen, that's just, that's just how it is sometimes. Eddie, Eddie's probably not giving him the, 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 the attention, but listen, if Eddie probably wanted to dig his heels in, he'd be able to keep the likes of a Coley or um, the Billum Smiths and no disrespect to, like your Billum Smith, but Eddie probably just doesn't care enough about that situation. So it's probably just see you later. Here's a hand, here's my hand, and and God, I don't really know what's happened with the Ricoli, Ricoli relationship because he's done like a, I believe they've done a good job for Lawrence Ricoli, but Lawrence obviously believes that he kind of deserves more. And listen, boxing it is a short career. You've got to make brutal decisions sometimes, and Lawrence is clearly doing what he believes is best for him. And it, it is what it is at the end of the day. It happens. It happens in boxing. But Eddie's, Eddie's continuing to do what he's doing. Frank's doing what he's doing on BT. Sky have got their thing going on. It is, it's, it's, um, it's a, it's a competi very competitive market, mate. So, as I say, for, for fighters, 
they've got to do what's best for them in a short career. You've got to be selfish as a, as a, as a professional boxer because you, you, your window of opportunity to make, make some dough is very, very small. So I, I've learned not to, not to like, especially in boxing, don't take things personally in boxing. It's not always personal. Got to do what's best for them, the fighters. Sam, just finally, um, over the last couple of years, we've had so many of the British world level fighters retire recently. Con Brook, Belly's gone, Hayes gone, Frotch grows the girl. A lot of fighters left. There's a bit of a market there to find out who that next star is going to be outside the heavyweight division. If I was to ask you, outside of your stable, just generally in boxing, name me three fighters you think have the potential power to become superstars who would they be it's hard it's hard to like to like just name three because there's loads isn't there like like in my opinion there's quite a few like you looked at little young Dennis McCann yesterday Hamza Shiraz I think he's a very very good um I think he's a very good speaks so well um really really good do you know what I mean um Azim he looks like he's got all the all the tools Ben Whitaker, Pat McCormack um uh even listen even like uh Jack Catchell hopefully getting a rematch with Josh Taylor. Um, it's, it, there's there's so many good young fighters coming coming through. Boot. Are we talking about? In, are we talking about just in Britain or in the world? Like just okay. in, just in the UK. Like we've 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 got a big pool of talent, mate. We've got a really really big big pool of talent, and I think it's um, long 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 mate continue. Sam, always a pleasure catching up with my man, and yeah, let's uh, let's roll on and. Look forward to some of these shows with yourselves coming up in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, yeah, appreciate it. It's my first one back in a while, isn't it? I think it's months, months and months. So, yeah, hopefully, um, yeah, all good, mate. I've enjoyed it. People will be kind in the comments. <laughs> People will be kind in the comments. You've not seen before. I loved it. And I'm also not that fat at the moment. <laughs> Not that fat at the moment, so people can't come at me for that. But rest assured, I will be fat again for winter. So when people want to come at me with the fat jokes, get them ready for winter because I'll be fat again very soon. Sam Jones, IFL TV, thank you very much. Thank you very much, mate. Take care. Download the Everlast Fitness app and find your greatness within.